Today I will be reading the negative reviews that I can find on Deep Rock Galactic's Steam page. I'm assuming that you already know all about Deep Rock Galactic if you're clicking on this video, so I won't go into detail on what the game is. As you can see here, it has overwhelmingly positive ratings and is actually very, very high on the highest rated games on the Steam charts. Alright, we've got a banger here. The trailer for Season 4 has just been released. What is added to the game after more than six months of silence? Jet boots that break the balance, uh-huh. Yeah, they certainly break the balance, all right. Being able to find them in like maybe 10% of missions is completely game-breaking. This guy is on onto a good start here. Three new types of enemies, one of which uses the sludge bump animation. Oh dear God, the devs reused an animation? You're kidding me, those lazy motherers. A new version of an already existing enemy, the cave leech. Okay, dude. Uh, you know, he, he grabs you, yes. He he does indeed grab you, just like a cave leech. That makes them one-to-one. -one. That guy that can walk around and impale you all the time uh, is not just a stationary sitting sitting duck on the ceiling. Yeah, that that is the exact same enemy. A new battle pass with cosmetic recolor. Plague Mask 2, really? A new hub minigame that replicates the Jet Boots minigame. Yes. <laughs> new beer, what makes your clothes randomly. Um, I read that correctly. And this feature is already in the wardrobe, Lamau. No shot. The beer randomizes your entire loadout, not just your clothes. Nobody's drinking a, a clothes randomizing beer. What is this guy on? Randomizer of weapons and overclocks. Why? I get that it's a hard concept to understand. Some people like to just have fun when they're playing video games, like to give themselves a little bit of an extra challenge. But, uh, you know, to each their own. What we didn't get. Zero new biomes. We we did get zero new biomes. We didn't not get zero new biomes. This is some negative play here, but what we did get is zero new biomes. Zero new, new mechanics. Jet boots are literally a reverse of hover boots. This is the highlight of this review for me. What What is this supposed to mean? <laughs> the reverse of hover boots? Are these things just like rocketing you into the ground? They're not breaking your fall damage? The, the reverse of hover boots. Uh, I have no idea what he, what this is supposed to mean. Zero new bosses. That's not true. Um, there, there very clearly is the new Corruptor boss. I don't know if you can call it a hardcore boss, but I'd say it is. It's on tier with, like, a Corlock weed. Uh, it is definitely a new boss. Zero content. That's correct. They updated the game and added absolutely nothing. Zero new content with this patch. In the comments of the trailer, a huge bunch of enthusiastic screaming fans who praise the developers for another incredible season in terms of content. You know what? I'm tired. I've been playing since 2019. I advertised your game. I gifted your game to my friends. I bought every DLC, but for the second year, you can't fix bugs? I'm sorry to tell you this. There are a lot of bugs in Deep Rock Galactic. As my friends and I say, probably the buggiest game. Everywhere I look, there's like 15 bugs coming at me. You can't do normal mod support. Huh? What What does this mean? Deep Rock has one of the best and easiest modding interfaces that I've ever seen in a game. I don't know exactly what proper mod support that this guy is imagining, but uh, I, I really don't understand this bit. And once every six months you make the minimum amount of content and go into the shadows again until you need more money from people who will buy your new DLC. Bro, we do not take ghost ship slander in this household. If you think that Ghost Ship Gaming has predatory monetization models, you must not have ever played another video game in the last 10 years. I will most likely be given a bunch of clown awards. Hmm. A bunch of Reddit fans will devour me with giblets in the comments, and others will say, just play another game, lol. It just hurts me that a game with such amazing potential is ruined by a bunch of people who don't want to develop it. Like I said, we are not taking Ghost Ship Slander. There are so many reviews on YouTube that sing the praises of this company for good reason. The monetization is so user-friendly, they're not out to get you. Stop complaining that they are a bunch of people who don't want to develop the game. It is clearly a passionate development team who loves the game as much as we do. This review, I don't know if anything's going to top this one. This guy with three hours on record says, The game is very repetitive. Basically just farm and complete missions so that you can do the same boring missions better. The game works- I can't. The game works well, but it's very boring. What? He's got three hours! He can call- you can't call anything repetitive after three hours, except for maybe, like, Sudoku, I don't know. 
<laughs> this comment. Leave the friggin' tutorial already. You can't have done 32 elite deep dives and maxed your kit. You barely have an overclock. No, I bet you don't even have an overclock. There's no way this guy has an overclock with three hours of play. His maximum level 10 on one of his dwarfs. That's This is a uh, extremely premature review. This update was really underwhelming. I was super hyped for Season 4, but as the new trailers and hints came out, the more nervous I got as the release date came closer. And unfortunately, it seems my worries were not for nothing. Very little has changed, and nothing was added. No new biomes, this is true. No new weapons, this is also true. No new weapon in bot or Bosco mods, this is not true. They 100% redid multiple of the mods for the Subata, as well as many of the overclocks, so I don't know about this one. This one uh, seems, seems a little fishy to me. No new or updated perks, this is true. Uh, we're told that there, or we are speculating that there is going to be a perk overhaul in the near future. But uh, this is true for now. This one, however, not true. We wasn't even hoping for much. Yes, grammar. <laughs> We've got can't sex Bosco frowny face. You know that one. Uh, this this one's pretty accurate. Oh, what? This this one. Uh, this, this is a good review. Good review. I requested a refund because of the kick function being abused. The host can kick a player at any point in the game. What makes this worse is a player base in intolerant to new players. You will get kicked for not playing like others want you, without reason, warning, or actual useful advice from players still learning the game. Uh, I feel like I disagree with this. Deep Rock has a very welcoming community, and as long as you're not trying to jump into random Hazard 5 missions when you're like a level 5 and just downing every 3 seconds, most people aren't going to be toxic to you. As long as you can find the people that you want to play with, and you can play at the difficulty level that you're comfortable with, that way you're not upsetting anybody for not playing well enough. There are also trolls who simply enjoy kicking you after 40 minutes before you can escape making you lose all the progress, XP, and resources. The host that just kicked you benefits from all of the work you've done. This is an extremely frustrating experience and damaging to the community. You know, I'm sorry to hear that this guy had a bad experience with the kick system, um, but I find in most games, you don't get kicked unless there is somewhat of a decent reason. It does suck to lose all of your mission progress when you do get kicked, but like sometimes there's a friend of the host that wants to join and you know you may be on the chopping block for getting kicked for that, or you're just not playing up to par and you're a new player, that makes sense. But uh, as long as you're in a low, lower level mission that you can handle as a new player, uh, I don't think that you should be getting kicked at all from uh, just random hosts. I am not able to play this game for more than a few minutes due to severe eye strain. My eyes physically hurt from unconsciously straining to see in the dark. I give myself a migraine headache and had to stop. Um, I don't know if migraine headache, I feel like that is uh, not necessary. Isn't a migraine just a severe headache? This, this man's essentially saying, I just gave myself a stomach ache IBS when I was playing this game. For a game that takes place in complete darkness, I would really appreciate a global brightness or illumination setting. Unfortunately, darkness and flares are an unavoidable part of playing the game which I now can't experience without causing myself pain. If you're visually impaired, this game may not be accessible to you. Who would have thought that a game with darkness in the subtitle is a dark game? I know. There are many fantastic, universally loved games that have darkness and lighting up that darkness as a core game mechanic. Think Minecraft or Terraria. Specifically Terraria, because when I play Terraria and I do get the kick, you know, like, like we all do, I get my kicks where I want to go do a Terraria playthrough. When I do that, I tend to get headaches, and I know that I just accept that that's kind of a part of playing Terraria. The darkness in Terraria is darker than the darkness in Deep Rock. Does that make sense? It is pitch black when you're playing Terraria in an area that you don't have lit up. But playing Terraria on a global illumination setting would completely ruin the fun of exploring the caves. Same thing's true in Deep Rock. Now this guy's got 40 hours on record, and you'd think by now he would understand that having a scout light up the caves is pretty much the only way to avoid straining your eyes to see in the darkness. This is why you should always play in public lobbies, in my opinion, or play with four dwarves, because having a scout on your team is really nice. I can't stand playing without a scout for too many missions in a row. It does suck to strain your eyes that hard. But that's why the game gives you the option to light it up. Not a bad game, don't get me wrong, but after five hours you will have seen and done everything in this game. Hmm. There are three huge problems that ruin this game. One, this game's replayability relies heavily on skins for your gun, dwarf, etc. And in my opinion, this is a complete waste of time. There isn't tons of new guns to unlock that will seriously change the gameplay. Which leads me to my second point. 
Weapons, there is maybe two different weapons for each dwarf class besides the one that you start with. And the gunplay in, in this is very bland and not really exciting. Three, there are like four different types of enemies. I really expected the new cave biome to have different alien creatures, but nope, you get all the same generic few alien spider things everywhere, and it's really disappointing. Overall, the game makes me feel like an indie company wanted to be a AAA company and made something in a week that would birth DLCs so they can make money. It's an okay game, but it gets old fast. You know, this one speaks for itself. Uh, I think that their points are just incorrect. The overclock progression is much more than skins alone. With 18 hours on record, I wouldn't expect this guy to understand. And I, it's, it's tough, man. I feel like we live in a world where people expect infinite progression, infinite, infinite meaningful progression in power creep to even be able to play a game for more than 10 hours. In my 600 hours, I've unlocked every weapon overclock, and I still play the game because it's fun. I'm not really going for a goal. I'm not shooting to reach max rank. Yeah, I just want to play because I enjoy the game. This one's, this one's short and sweet, and it's just like the last one. Very repetitive with very little incentive to progress. 7.3 hours. Yeah, that one deserves a jester. Can we get a, a good jest for this one? In 7.3 hours, does he even have a max dwarf? Does he have one level 25 that he can get overclocks for? Has he done a deep dive? Like, you can't play 7 hours and say, there's no late game, can't progress, nothing to shoot for. But like I said on the last review, some people just can't play a game without an end goal. Something to shoot for at every single moment. They can't play because they are enjoying it. They have to be shooting for that shiny new thing. And I, you know, I guess this may be some human psychology, but I don't know. Just enjoy playing the game with your friends and laughing and having a good time. All right, we got a, we got a banger here. An amazing game, but after waiting seven months for season four, we barely got any content changes. There's crashes, lag, and even a new bug that causes your loadout to break and be partially randomized. I have not experienced that one. Season 4 left us with more rock pox, which most seem not to enjoy too much, and much less content than previous seasons. So here are some of my complaints after playing quite a bit of Season 4. The new Stingtails attack way too quickly, making reviving impossible sometimes. Oh no. The new enemy is difficult to deal with, and we're not used to handling it yet. Maybe we have to kill it before we revive our friends. This was something I had to experience in one of my first missions playing Season 4, where we failed because exactly this was happening. We kept getting yoinked away from reviving each other because of a Stingtail. And now I know I need to kill the Stingtail before I can revive people. Doesn't seem like a flaw, just a skill issue. Barely any new weapon content. Yeah, this is true. At least he didn't say absolutely no new weapon content, because there is. But uh, they can't add new weapons every game. That's going to introduce power creep. Uh, hopefully next season I'll have a few new ones, but we'll see. Rockpox spitters attack way too quickly and can melt your health annoyingly fast. This is another skill issue. Oh no, the new enemies hurt me too bad. Yeah, get good. Or reduce your hazard. Way too many rockpox larvae spawning. Hmm, this could be perhaps due to them increasing the amount of spawns from the lithophage spikes when you're clearing them. Or because of the new rockpox breeders. But yes, there is going to be a lot of more rockpox enemies considering this is the second season of rockpox where they are doubling down on the idea of this terrible infection. Rockpox breeders have too much health. Have you tried shooting them in the little weak points that you can see? The ones that glow on every Rockpox character? That's how you take them down fast. Just a, this is a pro tip. Don't tell anybody I told you it. Um, cause this is a actual life hack that'll save you so many bullets. Rockpox enemies spawn in massive groups sometimes. Yep. Welcome to Critical Corruption, the title of the season. Mods still cause jiggle bones to break. What does this mean? I have no idea what that means. Jet boots barely show up. Yes, they're rare, but the other guy said that they're completely breaking the game, so maybe they should show up rare. They completely ruin the balance and make this game too easy, obviously, so they can't show up in every mission. New boss is too rare. Uh, I've played maybe 25 missions and encountered the new boss like four times. It's decently rare, but I wouldn't want a core lock spawning on every single mission I play. I'm okay with how much the boss shows up currently. Although the space rig was updated, there's still a lot of symmetry and clipping issues. Uh, are you really going to be upset about having fun in the space rig? Who cares if you clip through something? It is the hub area where you're just waiting to go into a mission. I don't really think that this is uh, worthy of a complaint here. Lead storm overclock. Oh, we're getting to the specifics now. Lead storm overclock for the minigun is practically unusable due to the septic spreaders spamming their attacks everywhere. Hmm... It's almost like most gunners that are running lead storm stay on their zip line so that they can keep moving while they're shooting. Or you could just stand still and die. That works too. 
Some Rockbox enemies have their weak points at annoying places, making them unfun to fight. I agree, it's hard to fight Rockbox enemies. It is a bit annoying to have to move all the way around them to hit all their weak points, but that's kind of their MO, that's what they go for. Rockbox enemies still unbalanced in relation to some loadouts. Breach Cutter shreds Rockbox enemies while PGL barely hurts them. Uh, this guy just hates Rockbox. That's that's about it. He hates Rockbox, and he's put that in about five different points to, to this point in the review. Septic spreaders do too much damage, making Hazard 5 much harder in an annoying way, especially on salvage due to the limited space on uplink slash cells. Uh, yes, new enemy too hard. We've heard this one before. Don't get me wrong with this highly negative review. I love Deep Rock and Ghost Ship games, but this game is a massive, or this update is a massive disappointment. I'm a huge fan of this game, even bought the board game, so all I want for the game is success. I hope that this review will at least open some eyes about the update, and at the best, help GSG improve the game in the future. Okay, that's a positive note for this to end on. Uh, don't agree with all this guy's points, but at least he ended it on a positive note. As a good friend said, the best indie game killed by its own creators. How is this game killed by its own creators? I don't understand. I'm confused as to why this game is overwhelmingly highly rated. It's definitely not a bad game, but I feel like the rating is misleading. I've only put 7 hours to it, including an hour of kicking barrels into a flying circle. Respectable. And I eerily feel like I've put in at least 30. It's fun to hang out and mine with your friends for a few rounds, but it quickly gets repetitive, and there wasn't enough grip from the leveling system to keep me coming back for more. Most sane negative review of Deep Rock, potentially? I've said what I've needed to say about this kind of review. There's so many reviews on here that there's simply think that the game is repetitive, and I've been over it plenty of times on how I think that that's not true. Take a pickaxe and go. P.S. To be honest, there is one thing that is very frustrating. Unreachable drop pod. Sometimes there's no opportunity to reach it. You'll play a comp complicated mission for a long time and then lose because of the drop pod and lost because of the drop pod. 4.9 hours in the game at time of review, and now they have 108 hours in the game. I'm curious to think what, uh, or I'm curious to hear what their opinions on the game are now. You know, on rare occasions, the drop pod did used to spawn in the wall, not that you can't mine to it, uh, but it can be in a hard to reach spot. They've updated that in the most recent patch, season four, uh, not allowing it to spawn in completely disconnected rooms anymore. But this simply seems like a mauled review from somebody who was in a mission and failed it due to not being able to make it to the drop pod. Unfortunate. Well, that was an interesting look at the uh, negative reviews for Deep Rock Galactic. Let me know if you guys liked this video. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know if you want to see a second episode of this. And let me know your thoughts on the new season. Rock and Stone, brothers.